Good day, Chief here for CTT. Last week I graduated, so now I'm back into my uh, Warrant Officer Brown and back to my rank or my hat that shows my rank. I will switch out. Maybe I'll go to the beret when we switch to beret. I don't know yet. I I kind of like the old service cap. So. Like I said, another two weeks of leave going from Fort Rucker, Alabama to Fort Huachuca, Arizona. I also said I was going to look up the definition. I actually found it. I used to know this by heart at one time, as we would say, but now I have to read it. I found it in I Like Me as an Officer book. So, the definition of a warrant officer is an officer appointed by warrant by the Secretary of the Army based on the sound level of technical and tactical competence. The warrant officer is a highly specialized expert and trainer who, by gaining progressive levels of expertise and leadership, administers, manages, operates, and maintains the Army equipment support activities or technical systems for an entire career. What a mouthful. <clears throat> Not once did I ever go back to Fort Huachuca to learn on a new piece of equipment because anybody that served in the military, especially in the military intelligence side of the house, your equipment changes like every three to five years. I will sit in a brief for one piece of equipment when I go to South Korea for a year, but didn't get very little technical information on it. Uh, while I'm at Port Huachuca, I will go to the uh, experimental lab and see some equipment that I don't think I ever saw get fully developed. Saw some experiments that probably just failed or got superseded by something else and that goes back to me saying because like I was in the big red one I had a 254 radio I had a 292 antenna and then when I got to Fort Stewart for the 24 slash third when I asked how many 292s we have I got the what's that antenna no that's a 254 oh well no 254 is a radio I would say no that's a Syngars now see that's how it shows you how fast equipment changes, and that's just basic radio equipment. So I never went back for any intensive study on any new piece of equipment, and thank the good Lord, throughout my career, I was never asked by a regular officer, Chief, what does this do? And get that, well, sir, I can tell you how to turn it on. I can find the on and off switch, but I'll have to probably read the manual to tell you what this piece of equipment done does or would do for us. Never got in that situation. But leadership part played heavily as an officer because now I'm an officer, I give orders and I really don't say, it's really funny how you just say something and it's an order just because it comes from your mouth and we'll get into trouble with that with the Air Force later on on a, an assignment I had. I hate the Air Force. <clears throat> so, we graduated, like I said, two weeks, and we get to Fort Huachuca, and there's like three to five others, because one or two of us got phased back into the company behind us that graduated two weeks later. So they graduated on Thursday, got had enough time to get there from Thursday to Sunday to report in. And a lot of people already made their uh, request to stay on post at the on-base housing. I didn't, so I had to stay off base, or off post, I should say, and because uh, Army post. Um, so I stayed at the Best Western. I enjoyed myself for my whole time there. And um, so Monday, that Monday, we started class. So we got there collectively as a class, and uh, the uh, class or the instructor came in, did a little bit of admin work. I think it was got all our places of residence and all our phone numbers. This is before cell phones, 
so they can't contact us via cell phone. And then uh, the warrant officer God comes in, Rex Williams. We call them that, the warrant officer God. So he dismisses the instructor. He says, uh, you have to leave. I want to speak to this class. And then as soon as he leaves, he says, if there's anybody here that is not an original member of the Purple Pharaohs, you also have to leave. And like I said, it was about three to four people that had to leave. So the door was shut. First question out of Rex Williams' mouth is, tell me, what did you guys do? What happened? So he got the deer light in the headlight, or the deer in the headlight look from most of us, and then we, uh, we all told our stories, not all of us. I said, hey, I was just guarding the door, and I got yelled at not to guard the door anymore. And, and then one of my room, roommates, he had to he helped talk about what his punishment was, was to do that uh, briefing on integrity, and that took him aback a little bit. So he basically just said, I was the only one pulling for you. He says, because I could not get a solid answer as to what you did that was wrong. He says, all the warrant officers that were writing me, he says, don't worry, it wasn't like everybody. He says, but still the ones that did write me are the ones that said you had to go. And I had to respond back to them, well, if I get rid of them, where am I going to find their replacements immediately? Because now all of a sudden now you're going to have a lot of schools, i.e. Fort Huachuca, not having us as students. So he spoke to us for an hour about what happened, how he was pulling for us, and how he was like the final authority and say, no, you can't get rid of them because you can't give me a good solid reason why they need to disappear or go back to their units in shame. So that was wonderful to hear from him. And he will remember us. He will remember our class. And I will talk about that later when I finally go back for the senior class or senior course. So now we've got two to three weeks, I think it is, that we spend together as a group and we each have to give a brief. And of course we're learning other stuff a little bit more, how to be an officer, a little bit more of this, a little bit more of that. And as far as officers are treated and that. <clears throat> and like I said last week, we caused some confusion because we also got to go over to this other classroom one day and there's a captain who's going to teach us something one day and we had a break and here's all these brand new butter bar lieutenants and we're all walking around I should have got one out again I'll have to do a show and tell so there I got my silver bar silver shiny bar with a black square in it now these guys think we're first lieutenants because that's what a first lieutenant wears is a silver bar. So we have a break. These guys intermingle with us, talk to some of us, some of us talk to them. We get back inside the classroom. This captain comes in and he's just laughing. He says, what did you tell those guys? He says, I got these guys thinking that you're first lieutenants and some other crazy stories going on. One of the stories was told that we were all first lieutenants and that we were all had received a Article 15 and that's why we had a black square on our, on our silver bars that we were, we were being punished. And he laughed at that one. He says, I didn't hear that one from him, but he says, you guys told him all kinds of wild and crazy stories. He says, now I gotta go straighten them out. And he's, and you know, we had our fun, you know, these are, it was surprising that these guys didn't know the rank structure. So I don't remember what I gave my speech on, but no podium. But like my previous slideshow when I was going to be knock, I'm under the KISS principle, keep it simple, stupid. So black and white slides, just like this, black and white slides. Don't remember what I talked about, but no podium to stand on. I can sit still, I can lay down on the ground still, but I cannot stand up and be still. I will end up rocking. 
I will end up rocking and I like to talk with my hands and we were told not to do that either. So I had a heck of a time trying to keep my hands down by my side, but we could use a pointer because we were told you don't walk in front of the fly or slide and you don't turn your back when you talk about the slide. You glance over at the slide, you point your pointer or laser pointer, a, a yardstick, whatever you use, and you go up and down the slide and then that's how you brief. You don't walk in front of your slide and then at the beginning of your slide presentation you had to look at your audience because you don't want to be standing where you're I'm, somebody might be sitting over there and I'm blocking the slide so we had to get on either side of the slide presentation so we wouldn't block the slide from somebody sitting too close or too far on the echelon so to speak. And one of the slide presenters or one of my classmates he did a real good slide I don't remember what he was talking about but we could pick a variety of subjects and he talked about something that would happen in the local area if I don't if I remember correctly so I asked a question because it was interesting to me the next break I was ousted by two or three warrant officers don't ask questions uh, I thought part of a slideshow was a Q&A plus it's eating up time because you can speed up your slideshow or you can slow down your slideshow or you can be like me and just do it at 14 minutes and 59 seconds as I did at BNOC for my 15 minutes otherwise I would have had to do it all over again but so I didn't ask any more questions I waited until a break and asked questions but I don't think I had any but I can't remember what this guy talked about it was very interesting so after the two weeks of being together uh, we split off into our MOS's and there was three males counting myself and one female in my group so there were four of us 352 Charlie I'm now a 352 Charlie before I joined the officer ranks I was a 98 Charlie and now I'm a 352 Charlie but that will change in the future to 352 November because they do the Army every now and then likes to scramble all, not really scramble all the MOS's, but group all the MOS's to the, to the same number configuration. Because when I joined the military, we had 96 series and the 98 series was the two MI thing and then they shrunk it down into one. So we'll talk about that later on. <clears throat> and that's about all I got for now. I know it looks like I was rambling. I went from this subject to this subject. Uh, hey, it just happens. I mean, there's not much to talk about here either because next week I'll probably just talk about my refresher course and a few stories there. And then I'm basically done with Fort Huachuca. I mean, there's not much. I, I was there from middle of February and I think I left there the end of April, beginning of May. So I wasn't there very long, about six weeks. And there's the kitty cat. So now it's time to say, remember, freedom's not free. Chief out. <laughs>